Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, would JAC like to be heard on this issue? And state your name for the record. Yes, Your Honor. Fred Bischoff appearing on behalf of the JAC. Um, as Your Honor has recognized, as a state agency, we are subject to Chapter 119, and the uh, Sunshine Law is very strong in, in that regard that all public records that uh, are in our possession are subject, our public records and are subject to inspection by the public. Um, the uh, Florida Supreme Court recently amended uh, Rule of Judicial Administration 2.420 to uh, increase uh, the uh, procedures related to sealing uh, documents. Uh, and uh, in amend amending that rule, the, the court stated that the uh, goal of the comprehensive amendments is to balance the public's constitutional right to access to court records and the court's responsibility to protect from public access court records that are confidential. And I submit that confidential is, is the key word. Um, co only confidential material is subject to seal. Uh, and our policy is to uh, require attorneys to redact any confidential information in any documents that are submitted to JAC because they are subject to uh, Chapter 119. Uh, certainly the, the court is free to uh, seal court records and we're offering no opinion as to that today. Um, as an administrative concern, uh, sealing JAC records uh, so, uh, constitutes uh, an administrative burden on, on our, our agency, which is a small agency, and it, it hinders our ability to pay uh, bills promptly, which is our, our uh, main concern, Your Honor. Uh, I would submit that uh, we, we're objecting to the sealing of, of uh, all JAC records as requested by the defense. Uh, and uh, we would agree that uh, if there are particular records which uh, uh, are sought to be sealed that, uh, and in camera inspection and case-by-case uh, -case, uh, determination in that regard is appropriate. Uh, but uh, again, as to sealing all records, we, we absolutely object. We uh, don't believe under Florida law that it's appropriate or possible. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Does the state attorney's office wish to be heard? We have no position on the issue regarding the JAC, Your Honor. Mr. Baez, anything you would like to say in rebuttal? Just a brief rebuttal, Your Honor. Uh, addressing the arguments laid out by both counsel for the JAC and for the Orlando Sentinel, I'd like to point out that we're not arguing as these records should be sealed as a matter of policy. We're arguing that these records should be sealed as an equal protection issue on, under and a due process issue, actually, Judge, under the Fifth and Fourteenth Amendments of the Constitution of the United States. This is an issue that strikes right to defense work product. You're going to have a situation where it's not the defense's burden is somewhat a little bit different than, than what a prosecutor's burden is we can consult with specific experts and not list them as witnesses. We can, do, we can engage in certain work product uh, and, and have certain work product, but sometimes these people need to be paid. And there are many situations and many scenarios where, quite frankly, the defense may not want to present that at trial or ask or, or notify the opposing side that these are activities or things that are being done in the context of things that come out by attorney-client privilege, as well as, as well as work product. So it, to, to argue that it's a policy uh, argument would be a, a quite a bit misleading. Now, as far as the broadness uh, argument that uh, Ms. Fugate laid out, Ms. Anthony's application, the contract, and her entire indigency hearing has been made public. Those are issues in which the court analyzed and, and did an extremely thorough job in making public what the application was and what the situation was as to Ms. Anthony's finances. And this is all, this is all public already. So to say it's a broad scenario, I, I, I would argue that it's more narrow than what was argued by, Ms., by the Sentinel because... Quite frankly, all we are asking that gets sealed are the specific issues that deal with experts that we retain, 
based on either JAC rates or that of the uh, Indigent Services Committee, which I, I know Your Honor uh, chaired, and that's it. We're not asking to pay them, and if we do come in here and ask that the rates are above that, above and beyond that, which is laid out by the Justice Administration Commission, certainly uh, it would be hard for me to make that argument that this must be made private, but I, I can't say that it would never happen, of course, or make that representation, but certainly that, that would be a burden on the defense that we would have to overcome. Now, I disagree with uh, Ms. Fugate where the public should know, because just uh, should know what's going on in the inner workings of a defense. This is not the Orlando Sentinel's life that's on the line, it's Ms. Anthony's. And there are safeguards and protections that are, that are in the United States Constitution that trump, and completely and totally trump, Chapter 119. Uh, and to take it a step further, the defense plans on filing a motion shortly within this case to, uh, asking this court to declare Chapter 119 unconstitutional as it pertains to Ms. Anthony. Now, as to the Justice Administration Commission's arguments, I would argue they don't have standing to make an objection. This is a state agency. They will do what Your Honor orders one way or the other. Uh, and, and to, for some reason, for them to object, I, I don't understand the reasoning behind it. I don't understand how they think they have standing to, to make an objection. And the administrative burden is actually less if they seal these records because they won't have constant calls from the media and requests to be getting each and every document. So this administrative burden that they argued it falls on its face. Taking it, taking it from someone who gets calls every single day and, and requests every single day from the media, they don't know what they're they don't know what they're asking for or what they're getting themselves into. Um, and I would argue, Judge, uh, that the confidential argument laid out by the Justice Administration is true. Uh, these are issues that are confidential. And that's what I've been arguing from the, from the get-go. It's not a situation where we're just saying, you know what, we don't want the public to know just because we don't want them to know. No, we're specific where we don't want them to know various issues that have to deal with trial strategy, work product, and, and things that fall under the attorney-client privilege. These things are essential to Ms. Anthony getting a fair trial. And that's the purpose and the reason why this court should seal them. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Baez. The Florida Rules of Judicial Administration, specifically Rule 2.420, paren C, paren 9, addresses exemptions to the public access uh, to judicial branch records and governs the authority of the court uh, to see your public records. This rule basically provides that any court record may be determined to be confidential uh, in a case decision or court rules on the grounds that confidentiality is required to uh, prevent a serious and imminent threat to a fair, impartial, and orderly administration of justice. Uh, the court must balance that uh, against Chapter 119 and must also balance that uh, 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 against uh, the public's right to know. Judge uh, Grimes, uh, prior to uh, sitting on the Florida Supreme Court, uh, in an opinion uh, entitled News Press versus Publishing Company uh, versus the State of Florida, while he was sitting on the Second District Court of Appeals in 1977, uh, states the following proposition, which is found at uh, 345 Southern 2nd 865, states the following. A responsible press has always been regarded as the handmaiden of an effective judicial administration, especially in the field of criminal law. 
Its function in this regard is documented by an impressive record of service over several centuries. The press does not simply publish information about trials but guards against the miscarriage of justice by subjecting police, prosecutors, and the judiciary process to extensive public scrutiny and criticism. There must be compelling reason before some or all records of court proceedings may be sealed. It is no question that this case has generated uh, a substantial amount of uh, public interest and uh, generated a lot of news, uh, television, print, electronic news. Uh, but a blanket order uh, to see them, uh, the court finds uh, that the defense at this time has not met its burden to show that a serious and imminent threat to a fair and partial trial has been met. There are cases, uh, and I will give uh, some examples. Example, uh, if the defense has questions about whether or not a person may be uh, competent or incompetent, whether or not a person may be uh, insane at the time of crime, uh, can come in under seal, get authorization to do that for a confidential evaluation. That uh, would be entitled uh, to be sealed. What would be entitled to be released uh, is uh, the amount of compensation paid uh, and the number of hours. Uh, you can do that by uh, redacting who the expert was. There will be uh, cases on a case-by-case -case basis, Mr. Baez, on an expert-by-expert uh, where we would have to take that up uh, and uh, determine that. But a blanket uh, order of uh, sealing is uh, not appropriate. One of the problems that we're going to have is uh, in reviewing the transcript of the hearing which was uh, held before Judge Strickland on March 18, uh, 2010, uh, when you had the hearing to determine uh, indices for costs, uh, the record established that there was approximately two hundred and seventy-five thousand uh, dollars that uh, was uh, brought in uh, for uh, Mrs. Anthony's defense. Uh, according to the record, uh, twenty-two thousand five hundred went uh, to. Uh, Ms. Lyon, uh, Ms. Lyons indicated at that hearing uh, that that was not attorney's fees, but money she used uh, to pay uh, expenses, be it investigation, travel, or whatever. Uh, there was also record testimony uh, that Mr. Baez received $89,454.83. Uh, the record seemed to indicate uh, that that covered Mr. Baez's uh, representation not only on this case, which we're before the court on, uh, but the other cases that he represented uh, Mrs. Anthony on, uh, the forgeries, uttering forgeries, and in those cases of the like, which have been uh, resolved. Uh, the, that totaled uh, $111,954.83. That means there was approximately $163,045.70 left. Although uh, there was some general uh, accounting uh, in reviewing the transcript, it looks as though that money went to pay for investigators, uh, some experts, uh, travel, and other things associated with that case. Uh, 
It puts the court in a quandary because at some point, uh, what were those experts paid for? Some of that will perhaps be confidential. Are some of these experts uh, that were paid for out of that 163,000, uh, will they be testifying in this particular case? <clears throat> How much work do they still have left to be done? How many hours have they expended in the past that they've been compensated and how much will they need to be compensated for uh, in the future? And uh, as which was determined this case, we can't compensate them for things they've done in the past, but we can compensate them going forward. So basically, we're gonna have to do this on a case by case basis or expert by ex, uh, expert by expert basis, I, I presume uh, you have listed all of the experts uh, that you're going to use up until this point, although I know that you still have some additional investigation that you would perhaps be doing. Uh, some of those folks are already listed uh, on your defense witness list, I would presume. Uh, so... That takes care of the issue of the motion uh, to seal. I guess the next thing is uh, setting a budget. <coughs> what I'm going to need to know on that is uh, you got two categories of witnesses. You're going to have the ones which have been disclosed to the state uh, and uh, those will be done here in, in, in open court. If there are others, uh, and uh, they, which may or may not be uh, investigative or non-investigative, uh, that can be done in camera. But we'll do it briefly in camera I will make a swift determination as to whether or not that should be disclosed or not disclosed. Uh, if it is uh, to be disclosed, it will be disclosed. If it's not, and you're using it uh, to uh, as your work product, uh, uh, then that's fine because sometimes you may find results that you want to use or may not want to use. That's strictly your trial strategy. And you're absolutely right, Mr. Baez, that uh, there'll be some things that you may find. But uh, one of the things you have to establish when you're uh, expending taxpayers' money is that it is reasonably reasonable, necessary, and relevant, uh, and and that is basically governed by Ake versus Oklahoma, and uh, some of the cases that you cited uh, to me earlier uh, in your memorandum, Walls versus State, nine twenty six seven second eleven fifty six, and Lavender versus State, eight eighty nine seven second eight uh, eighty two. So, Mr. Baez, uh, how do you want to proceed? I, I think the, the, the proper, probably the best way would be to proceed starting off with him, making a determination, and then taking it from there. Well, before we go in camera, Mr. Baez, or any of these witnesses that you are talking about going in camera on, listed on your defense witness list? Just uh, two of them. Okay. Actually, I think that there's probably just one that's listed on the defense witness list. The rest have not been listed. Okay. What I would like to do at this point is let's take the ones we can take in public first 
then we're here to argument and listen to the state's objection, if any, uh, to going in camera on some of these requests. So the ones which, uh, <coughs> go ahead. The, the only one that I believe was listed with the state uh, is our criminalist, Dr. Henry Lee. Uh, we have estimated that his in court, and, and again, Judge, I, I had to guess uh, or guesstimate uh, as to what his costs and expenses may be. Uh, starting off with eight hours of possible in, in court testimony, out of court work that he has yet to do, it would be 25 hours. Uh, travel time, I believe he would have to come to Orlando two times two more times, one for an inspection of the uh, physical evidence at the Orange County uh, Sheriff's Office, and second would be to testify. Uh, my best guesstimate on that travel was $2,000. Everything else I took went by the JAC rates of 150 an hour. Okay, when you talk about travel time in 2000, let, let's break that down. Does the $2,000 include airfare? Yes, airfare, hotel, any uh, okay. car, any any costs associated with him having to come down and do the work that he's being requested to do. Again, I, I know it's a rudimentary uh, estimate, but of course we don't know the dates he's coming yet. Uh, so I, I did the best I can, and, and certainly we would. He'd be fine, well, flying coach. I'm not gonna ask you the guesstimate as to how long he's going to testify. He testify as long as it takes. All I'm concerned about is, one, that he will be governed by the JAC. Yes, I can represent that to the court. Uh, he also needs to keep detailed time records. Now, there is uh, different rates uh, for travel. Uh, we don't pay the full Monty so to speak, for folks in the air, compensating them at expert rates while they're traveling. And JAC can tell you what is paid uh, for that. I actually did the, the research, Judge, and it's, the travel time is $75 an hour. Um, and deposition time is also $75 an hour. Uh, I calculated all of this, and the, the total that I came up with was, was $69.50. Um, and again, I, I realize this is a very rudimentary, uh, okay. broad stroke type estimate, but it's the best I can do under the circumstances. Okay. Does uh, JAC have any objections uh, to what has just been laid out uh, dealing with Dr. Henry Lee? You can approach the podium, sir. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, we have not been noticed as Dr. Henry Lee. It appears Dr. Lee is an out-of-state provider. Uh, if, if that is the case, then uh, we object to the use of out-of-state providers uh, as unnecessary and unreasonable where there are competent uh, experts in the field within the state, of, within the uh, Ninth Judicial Circuit, first of all, and secondly, within the state of Florida, uh, due to the uh, travel expense, which is... Uh, uh, one the taxpayers should not bear if there are common experts within the state. Has JAC talked with Mr. Baez to see uh, how many hours that Dr. Lee has already put in this case and compared uh, the cost of bringing someone in new who would have to start uh, from step one to get to where Dr. Lee is currently at? And I kind of think Mr. Uh, Baez has indicated maybe, and he will explain himself, that there may be evidence that Dr. Lee examined at some point in time that may have been consumed during testing, that uh, somebody who is brought in at this time and point would not be able to replicate what Dr. Lee did. That could very well be, Your Honor, um, and certainly that is uh, subject to the court's discretion, but we have not had that conversation. I can, uh, make uh, Mr. Baez, uh, could you sort of bring JAC and the court up to speed as to what Dr. Lee has 
done up until this point? Yes, Judge. Uh, to touch on the note, I, I wanted to clear something up as well with Your Honor, because I had made a representation to the court at the last hearing that I would communicate with the JAC prior to the budget hearing. I made an attempt to do so, but unfortunately I, respond, uh, I got a response from the JAC stating that because this is a high-profile case, that uh, they thought it was best that we dealt, I guess, email and didn't have these off-the-record discussions. So I, I made the attempts to do so. Okay. But to, to answer your, your, your Honor's question, Dr. Henry Lee has come down to inspect the vehicle uh, that, it was, that belonged at one time to the Anthony family. Uh, in the process of doing so, he collected, I believe, 17 hairs or pointed them out to the CSI uh, individuals that were there and present that day to collect. And those were hairs that were not discovered in, by their initial search. I think they had two searches, and he's the only one that could testify to that. Um, he also did a complete inspection of the vehicle. It was an entire day, I want to say eight to ten hours. Uh, in which uh, he was there, and, and that didn't include travel time. He also, on December 11th, traveled down to Orlando and was prepared to uh, inspect the crime scene, or the recovery site, I should say, uh, off of Suburban Drive. We filed a motion, and that motion was denied. Uh, so in, that, in the process of that, we took him to the Anthony home, where he did uh, various inspections, uh, looked at certain types of uh, evidence there. Um, and then after the scene was released, the recovery site was released to the defense, uh, Dr. Lee again traveled to Suburban Drive, inspected the area, made numerous observations, and, and uh, I would say a total amount of time that Dr. Lee has invested in this uh, there's actually another uh, scenario where myself, Andrea Lyon, and uh, Linda Kenny Bodden traveled to the Henry Lee Institute in Connecticut to consult with Dr. Lee. Uh, he's also inspected all of the photographs that were taken by crime, uh, the crime scene uh, analysts, as well as much of the discovery, both relating to the vehicle and to the recovery site. Okay, Mr. Vice, I think you've uh, laid a sufficient ground. Anything else from JEC on that issue? Uh, nothing further at this point. Okay. The 14th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution uh, and the Florida Constitution deals with the issue of due process and fundamental fairness. While JEC has this rule to encourage people to use in state uh, experts, uh, in this particular case, uh, Dr. Lee have been retained by the defense earlier. He's done significant work uh, on this case, and the work that he has done cannot be replicated or duplicated by someone else uh, at this late stage uh, in this trial. Uh, therefore, uh, the court will grant uh, the defense's request uh, to utilize uh, Dr. Henry Lee Dr. Lee will be governed uh, by uh, the fee schedule in place uh, here uh, as established uh, by the Florida legislature and or uh, when they, the flo that schedule is silent uh, on the schedule which is set uh, by the local uh, ISC. Any other experts? I believe that that's the only one. You had mentioned a mitigation uh, expert. Are you abandoning uh, that Actually, request? No, sir, I apologize. Um, there are two other uh, individuals. Um, Janine Barrett, who is our mitigation specialist, uh, I outlined in our motion uh, Ms. J Ms. Barrett's qualifications and. One of the things I'm going to need in your presentation with Mrs. Barrett, I'm going to need to know the following. 
How many hours have she? How many hours has she already put in? How close is she to completing this? Uh, and uh, whether or not she's been compensated uh, in the past, uh, and uh, the number of times uh, that uh, she's uh, met uh, with Miss Anthony, uh, because one of the things you mentioned in your motion uh, is the relationship that she's forged with Mrs. Anthony in order to obtain sensitive information. I can tell you that she travels to, she has traveled to Orlando on an average of two times a month for approximately one year. Uh, in addition to that, she's also traveled to Ohio to meet with Miss Anthony's extended family members. She's also traveled to Fort Myers and met with um, her grandparents as well as aunts uh, th from her uh, father's side. Um, she has also met several times and numerous times with uh, both of, well, her, with Miss Anthony's entire family, father, mother, and brother. Uh, she has visited Miss Anthony each time that she comes down to Orlando. She spends uh, multiple hours with Miss Anthony uh, at the jail. I would say, on average, three hours per visit. Um, I know they have grown extremely close. Um, the estimated hours that she has given me that she needs to complete her work is 384, uh, which would allow, which would require her to continue. Let's stop for a second. You say 384. How many hours has she put in? So that, far? that I don't. That I don't have, Judge. Um, I I would estimate that approximately the same amount. She is approximately halfway through is the discussion that I had with her. She's halfway through with her work. And that work should continue on throughout, through the trial. My understanding of her work and, and the method that she employs is that this relationship is an ongoing one. It's not a situation where she could finish up in two months and not come back until trial time uh, because of the fact that if this ever were to end up in the penalty phase, there would be issues and discussions that she would need to have with Miss Anthony that, uh, quite frankly, no one else can, uh, other than, of course, uh, myself. I think absent, excluding myself, the person that is closest to Miss Anthony is Janine Barrett. Um, I have, I became Miss Anthony's lawyer July 17th, of, of 2008 and I've spent numerous hours with her. However, I can represent to the court that Ms. Barrett's relationship, the work she's done uh, with, in, in mitigation is, uh, I could argue she's possibly the most important member of the defense team. Uh, in addition to that, she has developed a, a relationship with Ms. Anthony's family members where they have chosen to open up to her and uh, be on a, a, a mere social relationship and has gained their trust. And I think, quite frankly, it would be extremely difficult to bring someone new in, to, tr to attempt to uh, build trust with, with someone after Ms. Barrett has left. Uh, mitigation and the close relationships that are developed in mitigation are difficult enough to build, but quite frankly, to tear one down and, and, start, a, and start anew would be extremely difficult, particularly in Ms. Anthony's case.